The IPB16 from Inkbird is almost the perfect controller when it comes to controlling a rim system or even a small brew in a bag system. The only thing that has perplexed me about this unit is that it came with a outlet for an alarm on the front here. There is a modification that can be done to add a switch to this unit so that you can control that alarm output with a switch. And we're gonna cover how to do that in this video coming up. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, click that bell so you don't miss a video when it comes out. A quick word of advice before we get started with the modification. If you're considering buying one and you want that switch for that alarm output on the unit, I would suggest you buy one from Brew Hardware. It's only $10 for them to add the switch to it when you purchase it. I spent way more than that by the time I got some tools and connectors and if you don't have any wire, I mean, if you, have in, if you don't have almost everything you need to do it, I opted to get mine without the switch so that I could do a modification and show you how to do it. Let's jump into the video. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is flip it over and take the back off. And you're gonna do that by removing four small Phillips head screws at the back. And then once you get the back off, inside you're gonna see the SSR, the circuitry inside, and all of the wiring. The wire that runs from the plug to the circuit board is the wire that we're gonna be interested in at this point. You're gonna to wanna to disconnect that wire from the board by just grabbing a pair of needle nose pliers and gently twisting it and pulling it off. Um, and then you're also gonna to wanna to clip the zip tie so that it will reach over to the switch. The next thing you'll wanna do is determine where exactly you're gonna place the switch. Now, if you wanna follow my design, I can give you the measurements. The measurements on mine are to the center of the hole for the switch one inch and three one and three eighths inches from the bottom or 35 centimeters and three quarters of an inch from the side or 20 centimeters now the switch that i have is a 20 millimeter switch and i couldn't find a 20 millimeter hole saw or i didn't have a step bit available at the time so i went with a three quarter inch hole saw which is 19 millimeters and these hole saws are not always precise so i figured it would be pretty close to 20 millimeters by the time i got the hole drilled anyways so i used the hole saw inside of the unit to determine where exactly to place the switch at so I could clear the PCB or the, the circuit board inside. Uh, once I determined a spot for it, I used my pair of pliers and just put a light little nick in the paint on the bottom and then use that nick to line up a pilot hole and drill with a smaller drill bit, drill a pilot hole that I would then use for my hole saw. Then on the outside of the unit, I used the three quarter inch hole saw from the outside. And the reason I did that was to keep a lot of the shavings from filling up the inside of the unit and having to be blown out or, or vacuumed out later. Once I got the hole drilled, it was pretty rough and I used a burr tool to clean that up. What I did was just uh, cleaned up the edges and then as I was cleaning them up, I would test fit the switch and I kept enlarging the hole little by little until the switch fit. Now, as you can see, you flip it over, it clears the circuit board inside pretty well. One of the things that I did have to do that I didn't show because my fingers were in the way is you'll have to pull the switch out slightly drop in the nut that holds the switch in place and begin screwing that on as you push the switch through the hole. Okay, so the black wire that we disconnected from the circuit board inside, that is actually gonna go to the middle terminal on my switch. And my switch is lighted, so it has three terminals, one for a power in, one for a power out, and then one for a neutral wire or common wire for the light that's in the switch. Now I use the hot wire from the fuse wire that goes to the main PC board so that the pump would be fused as well as the element being fused. I use a small spade connector and a short piece of 14 gauge wire for the connection from the hot wire to the actual switch itself. I cut a slit in the main wire that comes off of the fuse and use that so that I could ensure I was making a good connection inside of the connector. These are a connector that's called a scotch lock or a splice in connector and they allow you to connect a wire in line to another wire and make connection through the aluminum uh, pinch point inside. Now I connected that power wire to the fused side of the inlet, and then I connected the spade to the first terminal on the switch, which will supply power to the switch so that when we turn it on, it'll supply power to the terminal and then power the pump. Repeated the same process with the neutral wire, and I used the neutral wire off of the alarm plug, which is now gonna be the pump plug. Uh, here is a close-up of the slit in the wire that I put in there so that whenever I put it into the connector, it, I was assured that it would make contact. There's a couple of different sizes of wire, the 14 gauge and then the wire inside of the Inkbird unit is a 12 gauge wire and the wire that I'm using to connect the switch is 14 gauge. 
So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of surface area touching the inside terminals. So then the white wire goes on the last terminal on the light switch so that when the switch is turned on, the light will illuminate. Then lastly, uh, we're gonna reassemble the box by reversing the disassembly procedure, putting the back on, putting the four screws in. Then uh, plug the unit in, and I am going to test mine with a lamp. So I plugged in a lamp to that pump switch, turned the unit on, and then flip the switch and we are golden. Be on the lookout for this controller in upcoming videos. I've got a couple things planned for it, a small batch system as well as a larger system that I wanna use it with. So be on the lookout for that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. We certainly appreciate all the support. If you'd like to see my video on the overview of the IPB16, as well as instructions on how to set it up, click or tap the screen right here. If you'd like to see another video that we think you'd enjoy, click or tap the screen right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, click the round Short Circuit of Brewers icon now. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We will see you on the next video.